The Boeing 707, one of the most significant advancements in aviation history, owes its origins to the innovative design and bold decisions of post-war Boeing. Building on the experimental 367-80, nicknamed the Dash 80, the 707 emerged as a transformative force in both commercial and military aviation. After World War II, Boeing was renowned for its military aircraft, including the B-17 Flying Fortress and B-52 Stratofortress. However, its commercial aircraft lagged behind competitors like Douglas Aircraft. The 377 Stratocruiser, Boeing's primary commercial offering, struggled in the market, leading to financial losses by the end of the 1940s. Recognizing the rising importance of aerial refueling and the inadequacies of the KC-97 Stratofreighter, Boeing began developing a versatile jet aircraft that could cater to both military and civilian demands. This dual-purpose approach aimed to address the military's need for a reliable refueling tanker while exploring the potential for a passenger jet. Boeing introduced the 700 series designation for its jets, with the 707 chosen as the first model due to its market appeal. The Pratt & Whitney JT-3C turbojet engine, derived from the military J-57, played a pivotal role in the development, offering the necessary power to overcome the limitations of earlier designs. The Dash 80 served as the prototype for the 707, showcasing an innovative quadjet configuration. Despite the challenges of developing such an advanced aircraft, Boeing completed the Dash 80 in just two years, with its first flight on July 15, 1954. The prototype impressed military officials, leading to the development of the KC-135 Stratotanker. One of the most famous moments in the Dash 80's history occurred during a 1955 demonstration flight. Test pilot Tex Johnston executed an unauthorized barrel roll, demonstrating the aircraft's stability and capabilities. Although Johnston faced formal reprimands, his daring maneuver highlighted the 707's potential and left a lasting impression on the aviation industry. The initial design featured a fuselage width of 132 inches, accommodating four abreast, two plus two seating, akin to that of the Stratocruiser. However, to enhance payload capacity in light of customer feedback and competition from Douglas, Boeing widened the fuselage to 144 inches, which allowed for five abreast seating. Ultimately, to further satisfy airline requirements for passenger capacity, the 707's width was increased to 148 inches. The first flight of the production model, the 707-120, occurred on December 20, 1957, with FAA certification achieved on September 18, 1958. Test pilots Joseph John Time, Tim Cheshin, and James R. Gannett received the Ivan C. Kinchelow Award for their contributions to the certification process. Various modifications were made to the production models based on insights gained during testing. Notably, Kruger flaps were added to the leading edge of early 707-120 and I-320 aircraft to enhance safety following incidents involving the de Havilland Comet that resulted from over-rotation during takeoff. The 707-320 and 707-420 variants were designed to be 8 feet longer than the initial 120 model and were powered by JT-4A turbofan engines. The original standard model, the 707-120, utilized JT-3C turbojet engines. Qantas later introduced a shortened variant, the 707-138, which eliminated six fuselage frames, thus shortening the aircraft by approximately 10 feet while maintaining the same maximum takeoff weight as the Myhood 120 model. Braniff International Airways ordered the higher thrust 707-220 version, which featured Pratt & Whitney JT-4A engines, while the 707-320 was equipped with an extended span wing and JT-4A engines. The 707-420 was identical to the 707-320, but incorporated Conway turbofan engines. The predominant power plant for the 707 family became the Pratt & Whitney JT-3D turbofan, which provided improved fuel efficiency and thrust. The JT-3D powered variants were designated with a B suffix, while many existing JT-3C powered planes were converted to the JT-3D configuration, the 707-320B was only available as a new build due to its reinforced structure that supported a maximum takeoff weight increase of 19,000 pounds. 
This modification allowed for non-stop transcontinental flights from Europe to the west coast of the United States and from the U.S. to Japan. The concluding variant of the series was the 7 ho 7 320C, denoted as convertible, which featured a large fuselage cargo door. This variant had a revised wing design that included three sectioned leading edge flaps, enhancing takeoff and landing performance while allowing for the removal of the ventral fin, although the taller fin remained intact. Post-1963, the 707 320B models incorporated the same wing as the Mize 320C and were referred to as the 707 320B Advanced Aircraft. The 707 production line remained operational for purpose-built military variants until 1991, with the last new airframes constructed for the E-3 and E-6 military aircraft roles. Notably, the influence of the 707 is evident in the design of the Boeing 737, which utilizes a modified version of the 707 fuselage and retains similar external nose and cockpit configurations. These design elements also carry over to the 727, while the 757 shares the 707's fuselage cross-section. The Boeing 707 features wings swept back at a 35-degree angle, which can introduce a flight characteristic called Dutch Roll, involving alternating yawing and rolling motions. Building on its experience with the B-47, Boeing developed a yaw damper system for the 707 to address this issue. Acknowledging that many pilots transitioning from straight-wing, propeller-driven aircraft might not be familiar with this characteristic, Boeing emphasized training. During a customer acceptance flight intended for pilot familiarization, the yaw damper was turned off, which led to a trainee exacerbating the Dutch roll and detaching three engines from a 707-227 intended for Braniff Airlines. This incident highlighted the necessity for comprehensive pilot training and informed future safety protocols. Test pilot Tex Johnston's experience managing a Dutch roll as a passenger illustrates the challenges faced by pilots with early models. His recommendations for design enhancements, such as increasing the tail fin height and adding a ventral fin, significantly improved directional stability and safety. The initial 707-120 is powered by Pratt & Whitney JT-3C turbojet engines, with later models featuring JT-3D-3B engines that include secondary air inlet doors for improved airflow. The introduction of clamshell-type thrust reversers further enhanced landing performance. The 707 employs engine-driven turbocompressors for cabin pressurization. In many commercial models, the outer port engine is distinct lacking a turbo compressor, a configuration that became standard in later versions, improving efficiency. For experimental purposes, there was the 7 ho 7700, which served as a test platform for retrofitting CFM International CFM 56 engines. After testing, it was restored to a 7 ho 7 320C configuration and delivered to the Moroccan Air Force as a tanker. However, not all proposed variants reached production. The 707-620 was intended to carry around 200 passengers, while the 707-820 aimed to increase size and capacity. Both projects were canceled in 1966 in favor of the Boeing 747. Military adaptations also extended the 707's legacy. These included the E-3 Sentry for AWACS operations, the E-8 Joint Stars for surveillance, the VC-137 as Air Force One, and the CC-137 Husky, used by the Canadian forces. Beyond these variants, there was a customer coding system that Boeing introduced, assigning a two-digit code to specify specific options and livery. For example, Pan Am's code 21 made a 707-320B, sold to them designated as 707-321B. This system persisted across Boeing's aircraft lineup. In the 1980s, the U.S. Air Force acquired approximately 250 used 707s to supply replacement engines for the KC-135E Stratotanker program. Although the 707 is no longer in commercial operation, it remains an aviation icon. Actor John Travolta's ownership of an ex-Conta 707-138B, which he donated to the Historical Aircraft Restoration Society, HARS, near Wollongong, Australia, underscores its lasting appeal. Plans to fly the aircraft to Shell Harbor Airport have faced delays since the 2017 announcement. The first commercial orders were placed by Pan Am on October 13, 1955, marking the start of a new era in jet aviation.
The 707's rivalry with the Douglas DC-8 and its transformative impact on air travel firmly established its place in aviation history. At the time, the only competitor in intercontinental jets was the British de Havilland Comet, which had experienced fatal accidents due to design flaws. Although it was subsequently redesigned, it remained smaller and slower than the 707. While some airlines preferred the established Douglas aircraft, Pan Am's strategic ordering ensured it became the first operator of American intercontinental jet transports for at least a year. Pan Am inaugurated its 707 service on October 17, 1958, with a ceremony attended by President Eisenhower, followed by a VIP transatlantic flight from Baltimore to Paris. The first commercial flight occurred on October 26, 1958, from Idlewild Airport in New York to Le Bourget, Paris, with a refueling stop in Gander, Newfoundland. In December, National Airlines began operating the first U.S. domestic jet flights using 707s leased from Pan Am. In February 1956, Transworld Airlines, TWA, ordered eight Boeing 707-120s, launching its Starstream service between New York and San Francisco on January 25, 1959. On the same day, American Airlines became the first domestic airline to operate its own jets. Soon after, other airlines like Continental also began their 707 services, while those who chose to order only the DC-8, such as United and Delta, faced delays in receiving their jets. The 707 quickly established itself as the most popular jetliner, driving advancements in airport infrastructure, airline operations, and air traffic control systems. However, by the late 1960s, the surge in air travel demand surpassed the 707's capacity, resulting in overcrowding on routes. Boeing addressed this challenge by developing the Boeing 747, the first wide-body airliner. As the 707's engine technology began to show its age, particularly in terms of noise and fuel efficiency, the operational life of the 707 encountered difficulties with the introduction of new noise regulations in 1985. By the late 1980s, the quiet 707 package, developed by Shannon Engineering, allowed many older jets to remain serviceable. Transworld Airlines operated the last scheduled passenger flight of a 707 for a U.S. carrier on October 30, 1983. Nonetheless, several international airlines continued using the 707 into the 1990s, with Middle East Airlines flying them until nearly the end of the decade. The final commercial operator of the 707 was Saha Airlines of Iran, which suspended its scheduled service in April 2013, but continued using the aircraft for the Iranian Air Force. As of 2019, only a few 707s remained in operation, primarily serving military roles such as aerial refueling and surveillance missions. The Boeing 707 faced competition from several aircraft during its operational life, but it consistently managed to assert dominance in the emerging jetliner market. The British de Havilland Comet, the first commercial jet, initially presented a significant technological leap. However, fatal design flaws in early models led to a tarnished reputation, and even after redesigns, the Comet remained smaller, slower, and less efficient than the 707, limiting its appeal for intercontinental routes. The Douglas DC-8, often considered the 707's closest rival, benefited from Douglas Aircraft's established reputation and offered a slightly wider fuselage for enhanced passenger comfort. However, entering service a year later than the 707 cost it early market momentum, and despite comparable technical capabilities, the DC-8 struggled to match the 707's production numbers and widespread adoption. Other competitors targeted specific niches but failed to rival the 707's versatility. The Convair 880 and 990 sought to differentiate themselves with higher speeds, appealing to airlines prioritizing faster service. Yet their smaller capacity, shorter range, and higher operational costs relegated them to a minor role in the market. Similarly, the Vickers VC-10 excelled in operations from short or high-altitude runways, making it popular in certain regions, but its unique configuration and higher costs limited its broader appeal. The Soviet Ilyushin Il-662, a long-range jet designed for the Eastern Bloc, lagged behind in fuel efficiency and reliability, keeping it from competing globally. Meanwhile, the French-built Caravelle, 
a smaller regional jet offered innovative rear-mounted engines for quieter cabins, but was more of a complement than a competitor to the 707 on longer routes. In the 1970s and beyond, the introduction of wide-body jets like the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar and McDonnell Douglas DC-10 shifted market dynamics. These aircraft, with greater capacities and improved efficiency, were better suited to growing passenger demand, but they arrived as replacements for aging 707s rather than direct competition. Boeing itself introduced the 747, the world's first jumbo jet, addressing the limitations of the 707 for overcrowded routes and high-volume markets. Though not a competitor in the traditional sense, the 747's success marked a natural evolution in long-haul aviation, relegating the 707 to secondary roles. Ultimately, the 707's early entry, adaptable design, and Boeing's strategic marketing ensured it outpaced its competitors during its prime. Its combination of performance, range, and capacity allowed it to dominate the market, while its role in shaping aviation infrastructure and operations solidified its legacy as a trailblazer in commercial aviation history.